In this video, we will continue with the medical office problem. So the last video kind of cut off a little abruptly since when I went to go check on the time, it actually finished the video and then I just never resumed it. Uh, this video is being done without the Google Meet. So the last video I was recording the Google Meet with those that were able to join. This one I'm just going to be doing without them. So I finished the video or I finished the problem already with the students that were there. This one just being done without the audience. So the last video ended with us having done most of, or at least me showing you how to do the uh, beams, both interior and exterior. This one, we're going to do the girders. So like I said, at the end of the last video, we're gonna start with the exterior girders since they're a, a tad easier, although interior just as well, just as simple once you understand the process. So the first thing I want you to understand is when we are doing an exterior girder, you need to be asking yourself, okay, what is tying into the girder? Where is the load that the girder will see coming from? So when I look at this, I see that there are two interior beams that are tying into the girder right here. This beam and this beam are tying into the columns and thus bypass the girders like we talked about. So again, this girder right here is experiencing load from the, the fact that this beam and this beam are connected to it. So how much load comes from that? Well, we just calculated the uniform distributed load right here. So if this is the beam right there, these supports right here are the girders. And I have two of these beams. So the reactionary force right here is supporting the load pushing down from the beam. So how much load is being pushed down on either end? That's just the reactionary force right here. So these reactionary forces right here are how much load is being transferred to the girder. So I have 11.25 kips being pushed down on the girder both here and here. So there's 11.25 kips being pushed right here and 11.25 kips being pushed right here. So now we're ready to do the problem. So the beam length, or the really it's the girder length, it doesn't matter, beam and girder just kind of mean the same thing. We just call one beam and one girder in the problem to distinguish, but they're all members. So the length of it is 30 feet. Distance from beam load is applied. Okay, so this A right here, what is the distance that the, the load is applied? Well, that's going to be 10 feet. If this is the girder and then the load is applied right here, that's 10 feet from the support. The supports are the columns. So that's 10 feet right there. Next is I want to know what each P is. Well, I know that it's 11.25 total, but I need to figure out how much is dead load and how much of that 11.25 is live load. And we can do that easily enough. I actually explained this to you in the last video where I just said that you can set up a proportion. So I'm gonna pull up a calculator. And let's go back to the uniform load. For each square feet, I have 30 pounds of dead and 60 pounds of live. And that's kind of standard for the entire floor. So I could say that 30 out of 90 or one third is dead and two thirds of the total load is live. So I can take my 11.25 and then just say, okay, what is one third of that? 3.75, that's my dead. And then I can take 11.25 and then times two thirds, 7.5 is live. And when you add those together, you'll get your 11.25 again. So the dead is 3.75 and then the live is 7.5. And when you add those, there's your 11.25. So we took our 11.25, which was our reactionary forces right here. We multiplied it by the proportions to figure out how much is dead and how much is live. Now that we've done that, 
we're done with the hard part. So our F of Y is, I believe it was 36,000 PSI. And then 29 million, that's the standard. So now I have a Z of X of 62.625. So I need to choose the lightest member that is at least 62.6. Go back to here, the lightest number that is at least 62.6. So I go to properties and I start pretty low. I usually start like W12, W14. So we'll do the W14 to start. Um, 62.6. So the lightest W14 member is W14 by 43. So now that I know what the lightest W14 member is, I'm going to look at the lightest W16 and see if it's lighter than this one. So the lightest W16 that works is W16 by 36, which is lighter than the W14. So now I know that this is my best choice so far. Now let's look at the W18s and see if that's even better. So the W18 by 35 is lighter by one pound per square per, per linear foot and it's actually stronger so the w18 by 35 is my best choice and since this is the lightest w18 that even exists we could stop there if you want to see why well the lightest w21 is going to be even more than that so w18 by 35 is the best member to choose so that's 66.5 and we'll do the inertia while we're here. That's 510. So 66.5. And then the inertia while we're here is 510. So I know that deflection is good. And I know that moment is good. Shear is definitely going to be good because we pretty much never fail from shear. But we'll do it while we're at it. So we got to go to dimensions. Go back down to W18 by 35. La la la. 0.3 and 17.7. And it's good. So now we've just sized the exterior girders. Now we'll do an interior girder. So the interior girder the next question is, okay, what is tying into this interior girder? How many beams reactionary forces? So take a second and come up with the answer in your head and then I'll say it. Again, how many beams reactionary forces are tying into this interior girder? And the answer is four. So we'll look at this girder right here. And I have the reactionary forces of this interior beam, the reactionary force of this interior beam, the reactionary force of this interior beam, and the reactionary force of this interior beam. And since these two are being applied at the same location, we're just going to take these values and multiply them by two because there's this is for one, and now we have two happening at that moment. So I'm just going to double this. 3.75 times 2 is 7.5. 7.5 times 2 is 15. Delete this so we don't get confused. And now we're going to do the same process again with our higher Z of X value. So I'm going to find the lightest member that has a Z of X of at least 125.25. And that was how I will do it. Um, I'm not going to do this one through the completion. I want you to do that on your own. I don't want to give you, I don't think you need another example to be honest. And that's how you do it. So we've done interior beams, exterior beams, interior girders, and exterior girders. Uh, the last part on the homework, which has to do with um, the quantities of steel, I want you to try and figure that on your own. I believe that you should be able to. And that is it.